Yeah, my name is Peter and I'm the CEO of uh, Analytics Creator. Also my colleague, uh, Dimitri, CTO of Analytics Creator. He's responsible for the whole development. He's also here, we'll do the presentation later. And also Biljana is here, our marketing expert. And we guide you all together through uh, this presentation now. So, um, what's behind uh, the headline, Data Warehouse Automation for Beginners? Uh, after this session, you will have learned uh, what you can do with Analytics Creator and what goals you can achieve. So if you are a beginner with Data Warehouse Automation and maybe you're experienced uh, with, uh, data warehouse, uh, with Data Warehousing and Analytics, in this case, it's easy for you <clears throat> to understand Analytics Creator and I uh, would say in almost uh, two days, uh, you can use Analytics Creator for projects and uh, you will be uh, productive. But um, yeah, if you are a beginner, beginner, so it means uh, if you have not really uh, experience uh, with, with uh, data warehousing or uh, just a little experience uh, with, with analytics, uh, in this case, for sure, it takes a little bit longer, but Analytics Creator will support you in this journey and uh, you will increase with analytics creator much more faster, a higher level. Uh, for example, universities uh, also use analytics creator for their students <clears throat> that they achieve uh, also much more faster their goals. And so it's uh, for the students also, uh, yeah, um, better understanding what, what uh, data warehousing is. Um, yeah, we'll, you will see it also later in the presentation of uh, Dimitri. Also, we recommend uh, for beginners uh, some books for data warehousing. It's uh, the toolkit of Kimba. Uh, we, will, we will do the link uh, in the email you get after, and you can order it at Amazon, the book, and it's corresponding really, really, very good uh, with uh, Analytics Creator. So, um, What's Analytics Creator? What, 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 which kind of software is it? Um, analytics Creator is a data warehouse automation technology, uh, which is made for experts and can also be used uh, without expert uh, experience. Uh, it's working in that way uh, that you have a graphical user interface uh, where you see always the data stream and the, the holistic data model and the outcome is a generated code instead of uh, programming uh, manually. Analytics Creator orchestrates the full life cycle of a data warehouse and of data marts. Also the design process, the development process, the change process and the deployment. And Analytics Creator disrupts the old fashioned uh, ETL technology and it's up to 10 times faster and less cost. First of all, I want to uh, present you some customer stories. Um, I can say that this is uh, the customer Robert Bosch, a very big customer, uh, not only for us worldwide, a very big, huge company. Uh, they reported to us that they um, uh, saved 80% uh, time and uh, costs by uh, creating a data warehouse also in the maintenance process. And uh, just uh, two weeks ago, we, we talked with them and uh, said that uh, with Analytics Creator, they steer the largest project, the largest uh, Microsoft uh, BI project with Power BI users uh, in the whole group uh, worldwide. I think they have more than 5,000 users worldwide working with uh, Power BI uh, on uh, a data warehouse which was built uh, with Analytics Creator. Another story, uh, a much uh, smaller one, uh, but also really very nice, my muesli. Some of you uh, know my muesli maybe. Um, my muesli had uh, it, um, some years ago, not really uh, experience with um, data warehousing. Uh, they had just uh, some cubes in place and decided uh, to grow up a huge data warehouse for all departments. And they have done this with uh, Analytics Creator and uh, they employed a new guy uh, from the university, which had almost 
yeah, not not really experience with data warehousing. And they used the uh, analytics creator for, for, for the training and they read also the book I rec recommended. And of course they need weeks more, of course, than, than an expert, but they do everything by themselves. So with only four training days for the team there, uh, this was the only, were the only uh, training days they had uh, in, the, in four years. And uh, yeah, they do everything by themselves. And, and uh, yeah, every, every uh, I would say <laughs> uh, every year or every, every, every month, they, they grow up uh, new data models uh, and, and new reports uh, for, for several, several uh, departments. Yeah, this is always a, a nice story. Um, the next one is uh, a customer in the real estate uh, domain. Uh, they had to uh, grow up an, an interest layer uh, for uh, SAP. They have uh, many SAP instances in place and uh, they have done this uh, very often in, in for each instance. And uh, we, we couldn't imagine that, that they reported to us that they are uh, 20 times faster than estimated. It is a really nice story uh, and also you can uh, see the success story on our YouTube channel. Uh, we made a sandbox uh, to uh, to create the same uh, environment that the customer has. And uh, yeah, you can see in one hour uh, what we have achieved in a very short time. Uh, yeah, that you can improve it that uh, 20 times is also possible. Yeah, this uh, this is uh, some uh, some awards we won uh, in the bag uh, survey uh, 2019, 2022, 20, and also the new bag survey is now uh, approaching in in some weeks. I think in October. Uh, yeah, we were placed there always on the on the right edge, up upper edge. It means that we are one of the one of the best. I would say maybe the best in, in this survey. Uh, yeah, this makes us really, very happy. Uh, you can read also this uh, survey. Uh, you can download it from our web page. Um, and uh, the 22 is uh, uh, available and the 23 will be available in, in mid of October. So what's about uh, analytics created about our idea and, and vision? So analytics creator is a, a pure design time tool. What does it mean? So it means that analytics creator just generates the source code, nothing else. So there is no runtime uh, on, on the customer side you, you need. So there is nothing installed. You, in, you create just the source code, you push it into the Microsoft environment to Azure, to, to SQL Server, to Power BI, whatever, and it will run without analytics creator. So this makes you really very independent. So you can you can purchase an analytics creator for I would say 12 months for 24 months. After that, you don't need it, yeah, for for to run uh, the, the running process in the data warehouse. You just need it in the design process and in the change process, of course, yeah. When you want to do changes, you can do it in analytics creator. You're much more faster, but you can also do it in the source code without analytics creator. This is also possible. So uh, also you have a uh, um, holistic uh, data model where the business data model and the data model are combined together. And uh, the outcome of this is a source code. And this source code you can use uh, with one design on different platform, different Microsoft platforms, so nothing else. Uh, so on the Microsoft SQL server, on several uh, uh, versions on, on premises, or on the SQL DB in the cloud, later also on Synapse and whatever it come out in the next uh, years, we will support it. And uh, you, feel you can, you're free to choose which platform you use. You can start with on-premise, for example, then switch to, to Azure and switch to somewhere else, whatever you want. It's always one design. Yeah, and we have a open repository. This means that the whole design, the model, which was done with analytics creator, uh, you can you can use by yourself. Yeah, you can you can develop your add-ons. You can store also your data there. We have also partners. They they use the design of analytics creator 
and generate different uh, data warehouses, for example, Postgres, SQL, MariaDB, or something like this. Yeah, this, we don't deliver it. Yeah, but uh, we have partners who have done this, and you can ask partners uh, for for other target platforms. So this is uh, uh, quite a, a small overview of the architecture of Analytics Creator what we are able to generate but this is just an example so uh, these are uh, several layers uh, we, of course we have uh, a very left uh, the, the source uh, the sources which can be connected uh, with analytics creator it doesn't matter which uh, source you have it's oracle it's sql server or something else it's a, it's a microsoft dynamics also you can use third party tools to connect uh, uh everything what you want yeah google and and and, and hubspot and whatever and then um, the data comes in the storage layer on the core layer in the data model layer uh, and also you can create the, the cubes the analytics group tabular cubes or also just the, the, the microsoft uh, power premium environment and then you don't need uh, to uh, create an analysis cube and then you push uh, analytics uh, you push uh, all the model uh, data uh, to Power BI, to Tableau, click whatever you want. Yeah. So this is just an example. You can uh, have more layers if you want. You can design it however you want. So uh, um, Analyze Creator works with, uh, with a five-step approach. At first, uh, you connect uh, with your source data. Um, after that, uh, Analyze Creator uh, put out the, the information of your data. So it means the, 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 the columns, uh, the, the fields, uh, the descriptions, uh, the, the key informations, foreign key, power, uh, key and so on and so on. And after that, uh, in the third step, analytics creator uh, analyze this uh, metadata and suggest you a suitable model on that. Yeah, this model is, uh, is uh, whatever you choose, a data world model, a, a dimensional model. And after that, you optimize the model. Yeah, you do your manipulations. You, you can also write code if you want. Yeah, it's not out of the box, everything. Uh, you, you define your measures, maybe new dimension or something like this. And after that, you deploy it. Yeah, you, you generate the source code and you deploy it wherever you want, yeah, through Visual Studio, to Power BI directly, to, to Azure, to SQL Server, and so on. Yeah. So now next, um, I want to go, uh, show you some uh, use cases. Um, there are just uh, some of them which are used uh, very often, of course. Uh, the green field, uh, if you have nothing uh, in place, then, uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy to construct a new data warehouse with analytics creator. Um, sometimes it, it's useful if you have something in place. Um, you have to find out if it makes sense to modernize it, uh, to to create a complete new one. Uh, but this we, we can help you with this. Uh, what is the right way? Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, a new customer. It's a well-known uh, company here in Germany. Uh, they decided to modernize the existing data warehouse. They, they have new requirements from the business, from the IT. Uh, they have a, a SAP as a source data system, and they want to, to, to use the, uh, the actual uh, measures, the calculations, the store procedures. So we have done there, uh, we helped the customer in a little bit uh, to define uh, approach where it's possible to do reverse engineering so that we use the old code for the old data warehouse and modernize the existing one yeah this is also possible and you can um, watch this um, this success case in uh, 10th and 11th uh, november at our analytics creator congress there we will have the presentation the customer presented uh, it takes maybe half hour and uh, he show exactly uh, what he has done and what he has achieved with Analytics Creator. Yeah, so uh, what we have also very often is uh, that customer uh, like to create an analytics platform 
on Microsoft uh, Azure uh, using SAP sources, also on premises possible, of course. This is also what we very often we use there, the Teobyte connector. Uh, this works very smoothly. Um, some customers have already the Teobyte connector in place and it's just a switch uh, to analytics creator to generate um, like a, the data warehouse uh, with, with SAP. There are many videos also on our YouTube channel. Yeah, um, more and more customers uh, switch from the actual on-premise platform uh, to Azure. We have the possibility that this shift to Azure Cloud works uh, very smoothly and very fast and very cost efficient. Uh, this is also a nice thing. Uh, near real time uh, platforms, uh, yeah, this is something which customers want uh, to have uh, in, in future and also more and more customers ask about that. Uh, this is possible with Analytics Creator, we support this. And for partners, uh, it's uh, interesting to have Analytics Creator as a managed service environment. Uh, you can, you can uh, provide in a multi-client environment um, a data warehouse, a standard data warehouse for, for many customers and do your uh, adjustments for each uh, customer. Uh, this is also something we provide, uh, especially for, for partners. They want to uh, use uh, managed service uh, for end customers. Yeah, uh, this is the important thing from, from my side. You can also watch our new website. It's online uh, just uh, three days. Uh, we have uh, many more use cases there and uh, detailed explained a lot of documents there. I like it very much. It's pretty nice. I hope you like it too. Just watch our website. Uh, yeah, and uh, now, for now, Dimitri uh, will do the presentation uh, for beginners and uh, I give the token to uh, Dimitri. Okay, uh, then I will continue. A moment, I will present my screen. Okay. Peter, can you see my screen? Can you confirm, please? Peter, can you hear me? Now I see it, yeah. Okay, very well. Okay, then uh, let's start. Mm, I will start on the creator now. And uh, we will create as a new data warehouse from scratch. Um, first, I will create the new uh, data warehouse project or new repository. Let's call it uh, test CWH, for example. And now Analytics Data generates uh, the project uh, database. Uh, or repository. Uh, this is a database containing the full definition of uh, the data warehouse, which we will uh, generate. This database uh, will be stored on the SQL Server, usually located uh, on your local computer or somewhere in your network. I have here the SQL Server on my demo computer. And uh, on this SQL Server, uh, the new generated database called repo underscore test TWH. Test TWH is the name of our repository. It will be stored, and this database has uh, you know, all, uh, the definition of our data warehouse. Okay, uh, now uh, our project. Uh, is still empty and first we will add the new connector to the data source. On my SQL Server I have AdventureWorks uh, database uh, which we usually use to uh, demonstrate uh, analytics creator and I will add the new connector to this uh, source database, let's call it AV. Uh, we support different kinds of connectors like SQL Server, Oracle, uh, Flat Files, uh, Excel, uh, different Aledebe or ODBC data sources. We support uh, 
uh, SIP directly, we can uh, read the metadata from the uh, SIP and can communicate with SIP directly. Okay, we support additionally uh, Azure on blob storage and flow data. Uh, data sources, but in our case, we will use SQL Server as connector, and uh, I have to define the connection string. Okay, save, test connection, connection successfully established. And now, well, uh, there are two ways how I can generate the new data warehouse. First, I can select um, uh, manually different uh, source tables, generate imports, uh, historizations, and so on. Or I can use a data warehouse wizard. Let me call it data warehouse wizard. Uh, will help you uh, to create a draft version of your data warehouse uh, very quickly. And uh, we will use data warehouse wizard uh, to generate our new data warehouse. Uh, I will uh, use some tables from the human resources schema uh, to generate our data warehouse. Uh, here I can select between uh, different architectures, classic, this is a Kimball, uh, typical Kimball um, modeling approach, a data world too, or uh, um, it can offer you a mixed approach, uh, combining the best uh, features from uh, Kimball and Data World, the Data World uh, World. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I will create the typical Kimball uh, data model. Uh, okay, uh, what we will do? We will import every uh, table from uh, the Human Resources Schema of AdventureWorks database, we will historicize uh, every table, we will create the dimensions and uh, for three tables, employee department, history, pay history, and job candidate, we will create the effect uh, transformations. Okay, uh, on the next screen I can define um, the names of the objects generated in the data warehouse. For example, every dimension will have a gene prefix in the front of the name. Uh, fact transformations will have fact prefix and so on. On the next screen, I can, on the next uh, window, I can define some additional properties. For example, we will create a calendar dimension with a specific um, time period. Uh, but let's just click on the finish. Analytics data now is analyzing uh, the metadata of our uh, source uh, database and generates for us uh, the data warehouse. Okay, and here you can see the typical uh, data layer diagram or a data flow diagram of the data warehouse. From left to the right, there are different uh, layers. Uh, okay, um, this model is uh, offering uh, by uh, data warehouse wizard. You surely you can modify it. You can create additional layers. You can rename your layers and so on. But this is a typical, uh, I would say, Kimball approach. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, now let's take a look on the object generated by the wizard. Now, first, uh, you can see this is the source layer. Here you can see your data sources, for example, human resources department table. Here you can see the fields, uh, table name, and so on. Uh, uh, then uh, we have the staging layer. In the staging staging layer, this is the first layer in your data warehouse. Mm, you import the, uh, your data from the source into the staging layer. And in the staging layer, for every data source, we have a coding table. Now, for example, in department table, has the same structure like our data source mm, uh, table, uh, nothing specific. Uh, and the import will be done using integration service package, or if you uh, will uh, use uh, data factory, Azure data factory, you can generate uh, the uh, uh, data factory pipelines uh, uh, and uh, the definition of this import uh, we can see it if we click on this IP square. Uh, this is the definition of the import. First, this is a mapping table between the source and target uh, uh, 
fields and the source and budget uh, table. Okay, what we can additionally do, we can define here different filters, for example, we can restrict uh, the um, data which we import using this filter. Filter can be dynamically, dynamically uh, uh, generated using uh, the variables. For example, I can generate, uh, I, I can define the variable, I don't know, timestamp. Uh, and then I can say, for example, modify date it is a field uh, and uh, it's a source table is greater than uh, timestamp variable and uh, using this approach I can uh, generate I, I can um, generate a different kind of uh, differential uh, data loading or delta loading our customers uh, use this approach uh, very often uh, especially uh, when uh, this the bigger SAP sources, for example, uh, the using of the filters uh, can uh, help you to uh, restrict the amount of data which you import every day and, uh, for example, use a differential data loading. Okay, um, then the next layer, this is a persistent staging layer. It is not usually not uh, necessary to create the persistent staging layer. Um, but uh, we uh, usually uh, 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 you, usually uh, you, you, you will create such persistent staging layer containing containing historic historized data. Uh, what is the persistent staging layer, and what is the difference between, the, for example, table STG department and BIM department? If I click on this STG department table, I will see this table has the same columns like the import table and three additional columns and two of them this is these two columns uh dot phone hist and dot this hist or uh, valid from and valid to uh this is um, these two fields uh provide the information about uh, the uh, validity period of specific data role um when we Input the data after the input. We compare the input data with the data stored in the staging uh, in the persistent staging layer in the table S T G department. And when we find the changes, uh, the differences between the imported and historized data, the old historized data will be closed. That means the validity period will be uh, closed and the new data role will be added to the historized table. Therefore, uh, we store the history of the changes in the uh, uh, historized uh, table STG department. Every change uh, in the source data will be stored uh, in this STG department table, but we have access to the previous versions of our data. Uh, okay, additionally, there is one more column called uh, SATS ID in our case, the names uh, can be changed, of course. This is the surrogate key, uh, and this key will later, later uh, will be used, um, for example, to combine facts and dimensions as uh, the uh, surrogate primary, primary key uh, for this table. Um, as I said, the historization uh, is not, I mean, it is your uh, uh, decision if you will use uh, historization or not. Of course, it is not um, uh, necessary. It's not obligate. Uh, okay, but uh, usually we um, uh, suggest to uh, use the data historization, and uh, it can provide you with some additional information, uh, like access to the previous version of your data, and. Uh, it is uh, really nice to use uh, the data historization in your data warehouses. The historization can be configured in uh, the history in the definition of the historization package. If I click on here on this HP, HP is historization package or historization pipeline. If you use um, the Azure Data Factory, if I click on it, I can see the definition of my historization here. Uh, and first, um, 
I can decide for every column in my table the type of historization which I will use. SCD2 or slow changing dimension 2 uh, means um, that every change in specific field, field will be detected and uh, historicized. Uh, SCD1 means, uh, for example, you have sometimes uh, the columns which history of the changes is unimportant for you. In this case, you can uh, uh, define the historization type of specific column, for example, modified date as SCD1. That means uh, the changes will be detected and stored in the historization table, but no history of the changes will be stored in uh, historization table. Uh, or, for example, sometimes you have a field which are absolutely uninteresting for you, and in this case you can set the historization type to none. In this case, the changes in a specific field will be not uh, tracked, will be not detected, and uh, okay. Um, well, uh, you can define the different filters, for example, uh, to restrict the uh, data which you will historicize. Um, you can uh, even historize a history size already history size of data history size of data I mean sometimes your data source contains already uh, historized data and you can take this historization uh, into the data warehouse uh, and uh, use the existing historization information in your open uh, historization tables you can do it too uh, okay very well our historization can be configured very very widely and uh, uh, how the historization works mm, it generates storage procedures uh, analysis creator generate storage procedures uh, to perform this historization and uh, the text of the storage procedure you can see it here and uh, you even can modify the storage procedure for example if i click on manually created here i can uh, perform the changes in the storage procedure if I want, but usually it's not necessary, but uh, you able to you know, modify the storage procedures. Okay, uh, you can define additional, uh, additional um, uh, script, uh, there are square scripts which will be executed uh, before and after historization, the same you can do uh, for the data input, of course. Um, okay, this is regarding the historization, how it uh, okay, the next layer, this is a core layer in our data warehouse. In the core layer, we convert uh, the uh, uh, tables uh, which we imported and historicized into facts and dimensions. Uh, to do that, we use uh, the transformations um, and the typical transformation in analytics data, this is just the view. Let's take a look on this team department transformation. Uh, this is the definition of this transformation, but the result uh, of this definition is a view generated by Analytics Creator. You can see this view here. This view was generated by Analytics Creator, and uh, we support different kind of uh, transformations. Uh, you can see them here. Uh, the regular uh, transformation means that we define the transformation here and analytics creator generates the view for us. Uh, we support the manual transformation, that means uh, you can provide analytics creator with a view text, and this view will be used uh, as uh, transformation. Uh, we support uh, other types of transformations, for example, a script transformation means uh, you can generate the uh, SQL script. Uh, in this script, for example, you can call storage procedures and so on, and uh, you can use such scripts as uh, the uh, transformation. Uh, external means you can create your own integration service packages or Azure pipelines and use them as uh, the transformation is possible too. But usual transformation analytics creator, this is such a regular transformation. Okay, uh, let's take a look on this transformation. Uh, here we can see uh, we use only one table in this transformation. This is STG department. And uh, here you can see the fields uh, provided by this uh, transformation, the fields exposed um, by this uh, view. Uh, this is a 
source column and uh, the name of the resulting column, nothing specific. Okay. But as uh, here interesting, for example, the predefined transformation, you can see here the lists of predefined transformations. Let me delete every predefined transformation and uh, let me show you how the predefined transformations work. Uh, if I delete every predefined transformation and take a look on my view, I can see every column uh, will be exposed as is by this view uh, without any uh, modification. Uh, let me add uh, the predefined transformation, for example, this uh, prim transformation. Okay, save. And if I take a look on my view, I can see there is R trim and L trim transactor square functions used together with the name and group name columns. Uh, predefined transformation, this is a transformation which will be automatically applied uh, based on the field type. For example, this trim transformation will be will remove every leading and trailing space and from the um, NVAR car and PAR car columns. And uh, if I use this transformation, every column of type NVAR car and PAR car uh, will be uh, okay uh, modified uh, using this uh, R trim and L trim. Uh, uh, transactor square functions. Or let me, for example, additionally use a string null to an A. This transformation will uh, convert the null string columns into n dot A dot uh, strings. Okay, then you can see here R trim, L trim, and then is null uh, n dot A dot. Um, this is, uh, you can define your own uh, predefined transformations. You can here we provide analysis, uh, you with some uh, predefined transformations, but you can define your own predefined transformations and use them uh, to um, perform some uh, standard actions like uh, the uh, removing of spaces, like the converting of uh, specific data types into other data types. For example, uh, Power BI cannot work with XML data type and you can automatically convert all XML uh, columns into, I don't know, uh, VARCAR 8000 or and VARCAR 4000. Or, uh, for example, Power BI cannot work with a binary data type. So you can convert it automatically into a uh, car data type, for example. Uh, using uh, predefined transformation, you can do it very, very quick and uh, without uh, big effort. Um, okay, um, this is how the uh, predefined transformations work and how you can create uh, such transformations. Well, um, let's take a look on uh, more complex transformations. This is this fact employee department history transformation. Let me set the filter. Uh, if I set the filter, only the object depending on the filtered object will be shown uh, in the diagram. And this employee department history, fact employee department history, this is a fact transformation uh, created by uh, data warehouse Wizard. The Wizard find, uh, found that uh, employee department history uh, has uh, several uh, many to one relationships to uh, other tables, to department employee and shift tables, and uh, created the fact transformations um, from this employee department history table. And um, what we can see here, uh, this is a list of the tables uh, used in these transformations. Uh, on the right side, this is a list of relationships. For example, the table number one, uh, two, sorry, and table number one uh, are uh, they have uh, the relationship. Uh, we uh, got these relationships from the source database. You can, of course, define the relationships manually. This is possible too. And uh, you can see the table two, this is the department, table one, this is employee department history, and this is the relationships between table number two and one. Okay, and uh, here you can see uh, only the 
uh, only the surrogate keys uh, from every historized table will be exposed by this uh, effect transformation. This is a typical Kimball approach how to create uh, the effect transformations. You, uh, in your effect transformation, you have only you should only have uh, the surrogate keys uh, from every uh, dimensions which you uh, will uh, use in this effect transformation to do it. Uh, but important is every table here. Uh, this is STG department employer and shift. This is a historized table, and it's pretty, uh, pretty difficult to uh, join the historized tables together because uh, uh, the uh, business key uh, for every business key in the historized table, we can se have several rows. Uh, this is the history of the changes of specific uh, data row, and uh, it is not easy to uh, join the historized tables together. And how do we uh, join the tables together? We can see here in this view. Uh, we use here the specific. Uh, Specific, it's a specific history, historization type called snapshot. Snapshot uh, means the following. Now we have the snapshot table. Snapshot table contains the dates. Uh, there is at least one data row in the snapshot table with the current date. And this is the snapshot dot date this is this field containing the snapshot the specific snapshot date and imagine you have only one row in the snapshot table uh, this is snapshot uh, uh, is equal actual date and then with every historized table which you join this is where condition snapshot date between that font hist and that this is snapshot date between uh, valid from and valid to practically and we get uh, from every historization table the data which were valid for specific snapshot date. And then we uh, join the tables together using uh, the uh, business relationships uh, like department is equal department, business entity is equal business entity and so on. But important is this where condition snapshot date between valid from and valid to between that from hist and that this hist. In, in case uh, there is only one data row with actual date in the snapshot table, uh, the result of this view, uh, uh, you will see only the actual data. But in you, if you can define more than one snapshot. For example, I can define uh, the end of last month, end of the um, previous, previous month, uh, and so on. You can define more snapshots in the past. And uh, in this case, you will be able to uh, see the previous versions of your data. Uh, the snapshot uh, will, be, will act as a dimension uh, later in the data mat layer. And if you select the old snapshot, you will be able to see the old versions of your data uh, using this snapshot uh, historization approach. Uh, of course, it's not necessary uh, to use snapshot. For example, you can say actual only uh, if you will uh, see only the actual data in your data mart layer. In this case, there is no snapshot uh, table in the uh, view, but uh, one additional where conditions is that B C is equal nine 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 twelve thirty one. That means uh, we get from every historization table only the data which are valid uh, right now, and uh, we uh, provide only uh, the uh, okay. We work only with uh, the actual data, but um, as I said, usually. You can use snapshot uh, historization type. Uh, it is, I mean, if you have only one snapshot with your actual date, there is no difference between snapshot and actual only historization type. But later, you can decide that you will uh, add more snapshots to be uh, to have access to the previous versions of your data and snapshot. Uh, Historization type and snapshot dimension can uh, help you uh, to do that. Uh, well, that's how the historization work uh, and uh, how you can create the uh, effect uh, transformations. But uh, let me do something. Okay, uh, let's take a look um, 
on this fat transformation. Um, uh, I, for example, we can see there are four dimensions in our fat transformation, but I can uh, I will uh, add here one additional dimension. This is calendar dimension. Uh, analysis creator created for us this calendar dimension. We can see this trans uh, this dimension here. This is team calendar. If I take a look on this um, uh, transformation, uh, this is just in the view. Uh, you can see here uh, the text of this view, uh, and this view provides us with uh, calendar. You can modify it. You can add additional columns, uh, for example if you uh, wish uh, to uh, this mm, calendar dimension uh, but i will use calendar dimension in my effect transformation because uh, okay uh, uh, okay I, <laughs> I will do it um, in the employee department history this is the table number one there are several columns like for example start date and and date, start date, and end date. This is uh, uh, when uh, the specific employer started to work in specific department and uh, stop the work in the specific department. Okay, but uh, I will uh, have here not uh, the dates, but uh, the IDs from calendar dimension. And to do that, I can uh, use a uh, macro functionality. I will add here the calendar macro. Uh, in the column statement, you can see this uh, a date to ID macro, uh, and the one start date as a parameter. Okay, let me show you how it works. What is the macro? Macro. This is very uh, powerful uh, feature of Analytics Creator. Uh, okay, what is it? the state to ID macro. Let me take a look. This, you, you can see here uh, the list of the macros provided by Analytics Creator. You can create, of course, your own macros. And let's take a look on this macro date to ID. Uh, macro, this is nothing more than uh, the uh, transactor square uh, statement. In, okay, we support different kinds of uh, languages. In our case, this is a transactor square statement. Uh, and some parts of the statement uh, were replaced by um, place uh, holder. This double dot one, this is a placeholder. And uh, later, when we call this macro, this double dot one will be replaced by the first parameter. Would we have here, for example, double dot two? Double dot two would be replaced by the second parameter, and so on. And uh, uh, Using this macro, we convert the date uh, or date time field into ID from calendar dimension. Okay, here are some uh, two boundary conditions. For example, if your date less than uh, 1980, 1st January, it, uh, it provides the zero, uh, the return zero. If your date um, greater than 2040, um, uh, December 31, uh, we provide you with uh, December 31, uh, 2040, December 31, uh, and uh, 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 otherwise we calculate the uh, number of days between uh, 1980, 1st January, and the current date. Mm -hmm. This is very, pretty, pretty easy. And um, this macro, as I said, uh, convert uh, every day uh, every date into uh, ID from calendar dimension. And here we used this macro. Okay, here, FK start dates, FK end date. You can see here in the statement field. If I take a look on my view, I can see macro call was replaced by macro text and double dot one placeholder here was replaced by T1 start date. And here in the end date calculation, double dot one was replaced by T1 end date. Uh, usually, such macros uh, can provide you with uh, a very interesting feature. You can create your own small transformation bricks, which you can uh, use everywhere. And later, uh, if you will change such uh, transformation bricks, such macro, you can do it. And everywhere 
uh, macro was used, uh, every transformation uh, will be modified. Uh, for example, uh, if I will extend uh, the calendar period of my macro, uh, of my of my calendar uh, dimension, I can do it and. Later, I have to only change the calendar dimension macro, or the date to ID, sorry, macro, and uh, everywhere where this macro was used, um, uh, every transformation or every calculated column and so on will be accordingly uh, changed. Okay, um, then uh, let me add here. For example, this, employee, this is employee pay history I will provide this fact transformation with calendar macro two. For example, we have here the rate change date uh, uh, column. We'll add calendar macro here. FK underscore rate change date. Okay. Uh, let me synchronize my data warehouse. Uh, if I click on this button, synchronize data warehouse, uh, on my computer or on my SQL Server, the new data and the new database will be generated, will be created. This database called, in our case, TWH underscore test TWH. Test TWH, this is the name of our repository. And this database contains uh, the definition of my data warehouse. You can see here, for example, every table was a uh, imp department, a SDK department. You can see here uh, all the views which I defined in my model. Uh, this data warehouse will be materialized in this uh, in this database. Every time when I click on uh, synchronize the Waha, the new data Waha, new database will be generated. And uh, important is uh, uh, during a synchronization, um, uh, several checks will be performed. For example, I can add here to this transformation. Uh, I don't know. Let me do something. Uh, uh, something wrong. For example, I did create a new column containing, I don't know, this is, uh, I don't know, this is, uh, this is uh, the error uh, what I did right now. If I take a look on the view which I generated, uh, which I created, you can see uh, this, this is uh, wrong, of course. Uh, and if I click on synchronize the Waha, uh, I will get the syntax error. Uh, there are some, there are some errors during synchronization, invalid column name, okay. And I uh, can see the red border around uh, this uh, transformation. And uh, I have checked and modify my transformation to you know, fix uh, the bug. Okay, it's the same error I would get if I click on create TWH, invalid column name. Yes, I can modify it, save. Click on synchronize the Waha. And well, my uh, now I have no errors in my data warehouse definition. Okay, uh, what we can additionally do? Uh, we can uh, you, you can see every transformation here. This blue square. This is a view, and we can materialize views. Or the, to materialize views, can we can add the persisting transformation uh, or persisting. Uh, uh, task. For example, we will persist uh, the view employee department history and content of this view will be stored in the table fact employee department history T. And we uh, have to define the persisting package or persisting pipeline uh, where the persisting will be performed. I don't know if there's one, for example. Okay, synchronize the work. Okay, and now the content of this view will be stored in this table during our uh, ATL process. Uh, we can do it with every fact transformation, for example, here, the system. Okay, we will use existing to existing package and the same we do with fact job candidate. Existing. Well, uh, now the every fact transformation 
the content of every effect transformation will be stored in the coding uh, table. Using uh, this uh, the assisting task, uh, we can speed up access to the data in our data map layer later because uh, every transformation here, this, I mean, uh, the fact transformations are pretty complex and uh, to speed up access to them, we can uh, create their uh, material, we can materialize them, uh, we can create the persisting uh, transformations and persisting tables. Uh, how the persisting uh, work? Uh, we can click on this PP square, this is a persisting package or persisting pipeline. And you can see uh, there is a stored procedure generated by analytics data to perform this uh, persisting process. We support different kinds of persisting or of materialization. Full means uh, the content of the persisting table will be uh, deleted every time. And uh, every time uh, when you execute the materialization, uh, the full content of the view will be stored in the persisting table. Persisting table will be cleaned uh, and uh, new uh, and filled up uh, every time uh, completely. Uh, we support different kind of merge uh, materializations, uh, historical, incremental, or poor merge uh, uh, materialization. Or you can define your own materialization uh, of the algorithm. Uh, in case you select the manual, you can modify the storage procedure which we uh, generate for you. It is possible to well. Uh, so it how the materialization work. Uh, and then on the right side you can see the data mark layer. Data mark layer is a very important layer in the data warehouse. This is um, first, this is the interface layer of the data warehouse. And usually if you later use a different reporting tools, they will access only uh, to the data mark layer. And for example, you can see here, this is team department in the star schema. Uh, this is a dimension, dimension department in the data mark layer. Uh, how it was created. If I click on this team department in the core layer, uh, we can see here the star uh, table. Uh, and here we can define in which uh, data star our team department will be, will act as uh, dimension, will uh, be used as dimension. We can have uh, several uh, stars, uh, usually the complex data uh, warehouses, they have uh, a lot of different uh, data marts. Uh, in our case, we have only one data mart there, this is called star. Uh, okay, you can see, for example, this is our fact transformation. And uh, important is later, if you generate your all of cubes, multi-dimensional or uh, tabular all of cubes, or uh, you generate your power BI model, so tableau or click models, the structure of data mark layer will be used to generate uh, touch uh, all of cubes, uh, uh, the data models for the all of cubes. And uh, let me take a look on this employee department history effect transformation set filter. Here I can see my data star employee department history. Okay, uh, let me click on this T square. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, physically, uh, as a, uh, uh, just the implementation of this data mark layer is just the views. If I click on here, on uh, for example, team department, I can see uh, uh, technically this team department. Uh, it is just the view uh, called start or team department, uh, which provides us with all data uh, from the uh, TWH team department uh, transformation. Nothing more. Technically, uh, every object in the data mark layer is just a view. Okay, uh, let me click on this T-square uh, of the fact transformation. Uh, if I click on this T-square, I can see the columns in this fact transformation. We see there uh, is a lot of different uh, uh, FK columns. This is a uh, surrogate key from different uh, tables. And uh, 
here I can see in the column all of reference, uh, which uh, dimension will be used uh, together with the surrogate key. For example, this FK department surrogate column uh, will be referenced to the uh, team department uh, um, dimension uh, in, the, uh, in our data mark layer. FK employer uh, will be referenced with the uh, team employer. Uh, we have two columns, start date and end date, which we defined, um, which should be referenced with the calendar dimension. But I, we cannot uh, uh, reference uh, two columns uh, with the uh, same dimension. It is not possible. Therefore, uh, uh, only FK start date was bound to the dim calendar dimension, but FK end date was not bound uh, to the calendar dimension, and we should um, create the new dimension based on dim calendar dimension. We will call it dim uh, end date. Save. That will be a new calendar uh, dimension. Uh, okay, it's this dimension. Okay, we can rename later. Save. Okay. Very. Let me synchronize my data or house. And now we can see that the dim calendar dimension provides us with two different calendar dimensions in the data mark layer. One of them called team end date, another one called team calendar. Let me rename this team calendar one moment. Oops. We will call it team start date because provide us the start date uh, information when the specific employee started to work uh, in our department. Okay, now we have two different dimensions based on calendar dimension. Okay, remove filter. Okay, there is one more uh, fact transformation bound to calendar dimensions. This employee pay history, and I would uh, change this all of preference. Uh, instead of start date, I will create the new dimension based on calendar dimensions. This is team. Uh, Rate change date, I will call it rate change date, because provide us with rate change date information. Okay, and now save changes. If I click on synchronize the Loha, I will see that calendar dimension uh, will be used three times in our data uh, uh, mark layer. Uh, once a start date, uh, once it's end date and this rate change date. Okay, uh, uh, I would create some additional measures. Uh, let me do it. For example, in employee department history, I will define uh, some measures like distinct count, for example, of department, distinct count of employer. Okay. Then employee pay history. Let me create one dimension, for some distinct count of employer. Uh, important is, now you can define your own measure name, of course, but analytics creator uh, can help you to generate the measure names. Uh, because every measure name, at least in the tabular all of you, um, should be unique. Uh, sometimes uh, it is difficult to uh, generate the unique names. Therefore, you can use uh, uh, analytics create measure templates to uh, generate uh, the measure names. For example, in this case, uh, we will use aggregation name, column name, and table name uh, templates or placeholder to generate uh, measure names. And you can see in the column parts at measure name, this is the name of the measure generated by analytics creator. Of course, you can re use your own names, but uh, this uh, name templates can uh, help you to uh, yeah, with the naming of your uh, measures. And I will add one more measures to the fact transformation job candidate. Again, for example, distinct count of employer. Okay. And now I would say my 
data warehouse is uh, almost complete. Okay, I um, defined uh, some measures. I bound uh, my fact transformation with the calendar dimension. Let me synchronize my data warehouse to be sure that everything is uh, correct. Okay, no errors. Uh, but you should understand, this is just a model. And now I will generate the data warehouse using this model. Uh, I can generate on-premise data warehouse uh, using my own SQL Server, my own uh, analysis services uh, or uh, analysis integration service packages. I can generate or cloud data warehouse using, for example, Azure SQL Server using uh, uh, using Power BI prefer, uh, Premium uh, to create the data uh, the tabular OLAP model uh, using Azure Data Factory pipelines to uh, perform the tail processes. Uh, let me create uh, the on-premise data warehouse. And to do that, I will generate deployment package. Uh, deployment package, this is a Visual Studio solution, uh, which contains a, a all information about the data warehouse which I will generate. Okay, let me create a new deployment package. Let me call it uh, on premis for example. Uh, here I can, I should uh, provide information about the uh, directory where my solution will be stored. Okay, and now we should decide uh, what we will generate, or which components we will uh, generate. First, we will generate the deckpack file. Deckpack file contains information about my uh, data warehouse. Mm, this is the most modern way how to deploy SQL Server database. This is deckpack file. And uh, we will deploy this deckpack file. Uh, okay, we will deploy it. Uh, okay, I would deploy it on to my own server, this is a demo server, and this is the name of my data warehouse. Okay, test TWH, why not? Okay, what I will do additionally, I will create integration service packages uh, to uh, import, to historicize the data, to persist the data. There is one, uh, you can see here uh, several packages. One of them, this is a workflow package. Workflow package usually will be generated every time and later you only have to execute this workflow package and uh, to fulfill your ATL process. Every other package will be uh, uh, executed uh, by workflow package in the correct order and uh, the only what you have later to do is to execute this workflow package or workflow pipeline in case you work with Azure and Data Factory. Would I generate Azure Data Factory pipelines? I have to uh, select uh, this uh, column, uh, ADF2, but now I will generate only an on-premise uh, solution and uh, integration service packages. Okay, uh, and I will generate uh, tabular OLAP uh, cube. Uh, to do that, I will generate XML script. I will uh, generate and I will deploy. Uh, I will create the OLAP uh, right now. Okay. Uh, uh, on my server, I have uh, an analysis service, uh, tabular OLAP server called demo. At the moment, there is no database on this uh, OLAP server, and I will generate it from Analytics Creator. Okay, let's call it STWH. Okay, I can provide it with my credentials because uh, to be able to process the OLAP cube at the moment, let me check how is my login. Okay, let me use the demo administrator account. And Okay, process cube and workflow package. No, why not? We can use it. Create cube during deployment. Here I should uh, select the mobility level of my OLAP cube generated. Mm, okay, 
here I can select the compatibility level of uh, okay, 2017, for example, it would be not. Um, of the integration service package of the database generated. Okay, uh, here I should select how, how I will configure my integration service packages. In our case, I would use environment variable, deploy SS configuration set environment variable. I think I have uh, okay. Ah, let's try to deploy. And now I click on deploy and deployment package will be generated. Um, but analytics creator do now it generates it generates backpack file uh, containing the definition of our data warehouse. It generates integration service packages and it generates uh, all of cube definition. This is this XML script and analytics creator uh, automatic um, deployed uh, uh, changes deployed backpack files deployed uh, uh, will deploys uh, uh, de deploys uh, all of cubes. Uh, it is not necessary to deploy from analytics data. Usually, if you uh, will deploy into the productive environment, you will generate deployment package, give it to your deployment engineer, uh, and uh, deployment engineer will uh, deploy the changes, but uh, in case of test environment or, develop, or development environment, you can deploy directly from uh, analytics created by Node. Okay, um, and uh, this, uh, okay, let's wait a little bit uh, until deployment package is generated, and then I will show you what is deployment package and how it works. And later, as I said, this deployment package is an um, end result of analytics creator. You can take this deployment package and deploy it everywhere and uh, your data warehouse will work without analytics creator. You don't need analytics creator to uh, execute this deployment, to, to, to deploy this deployment package or to uh, work later with the data warehouse deployed um, using this deployment package. The workflow package is created and okay, done. Uh, and now I will Execute Visual Studio and let me open uh, the deployment package which we generated. This is a deployment directory and here is a new directory uh, created right now. This is uh, um, uh, 20. Okay, this is a directory which we just created. This directory contains uh, our deployment package. Okay, deployment packages, as I said, this is a Visual Studio solution or SQL Server Data Pool solution. Okay, uh, first you can see here the different, uh, different uh, integration service packages. As I said, here is a workflow package. Let me open it. And workflow package, this is a package which you can execute later and uh, every other package will be executed in the correct order. First, uh, will be, uh, the import package will be executed, the historization package and the persistent package. Let's take a look on the import package generated by analytics creator. Okay, for every table which you import, you can see the department employer department history, there is a separate container. Uh, every import will be uh, performed uh, uh, independently, also parallel. Uh, and uh, let's take a look on this department container. There are five tasks. Uh, first, this is a logging task. Uh, we save some logging information in the log table. Then uh, we uh, truncate uh, the department uh, table. Then there is a workflow where we import the data from the department table. We calculate the number of data rows. Uh, in the transformation task, we can, we, perform, we can transform different data types. For example, uh, if you import from the SAP, you should convert the SAP types into the SQL Server types. And then we perform the bulk insert 
using the this uh, file concert task in case uh, something uh, is wrong we are trying to uh, insert the rows uh, um, row by row and then uh, the errors will be uh, stored in the specific error table and uh, well, nothing, nothing specific. Uh, this package uh, generated by Analytics Creator is uh, very clean uh, and uh, you, uh, okay, it's easy to understand uh, how it works. And later we update uh, statistics in the department table and uh, uh, perform some uh, log entries into the uh, log table. Well, it's really pretty, pretty easy how the packages are working uh, and um, this is a typical uh, import package, uh, nothing specific. Okay, uh, historization package. It's uh, very easy. We only execute the historization storage procedures here in this uh, in this historization package. Per persisting package, we only execute storage procedure, persisting storage procedures. This is very, very easy what we do in the integration service packages. Almost everything uh, will be done using storage procedures, historization and persisting and uh, import. Uh, okay, this, there's uh, nothing specific to uh, in the import. Okay, now let's try to execute the workflow package. Ah, uh, of course, very important. Refresh. There is a new database generated uh, by analytics creator. We, state, uh, we decide to deploy uh, the data warehouse directly from analytics creator and this database test warehouse was generated. You can see this is uh, our data warehouse. And now if I execute the workflow package, I hope uh, the data will be imported, historicized and persisted in this new data warehouse, in this new database. Let's try to do it. Okay, we can see import. Okay, everything is workflow package. You can see our ETL process is done. Okay, and let me take a look on the data in my test DWH, for example, imp employer select. You can see this is a table imp employer filled up uh, by the data from Adventure Worlds database. Very easy and is working. Well, um, then in this uh, Visual Studio solution, you can find not only integration service packages, but some other files. There is, for example, deckpack file. This is DWH deckpack file. This file contains the definition of my database. Uh, this deckpack file can be deployed using uh, either management studio, for example, here in the management studio. If I click on database task, uh, stop, not task. Uh, ah, deploy, sorry, deploy data tier application. I can uh, select my deckpack file here. You can see select deckpack file and I can create the new database using this deckpack file or I can um, update existing deckpack file if I select here uh, existing test dvh and say task deploy uh, uh, upgrade data tier application sorry and then select my deckpack file I can deploy uh, the changes uh, stored in the deckpack file uh, into existing uh, database. Or I can use there is a one uh, common stream utility from uh, Microsoft called SQL package.exe. And using this SQL package.exe, I can deploy my uh, deckpack files and create new databases or uh, update existing databases uh, using uh, the deckpack files created by Analytics Creator. Then there is this XMLA file. Uh, XMLA file, uh, let me show you what is it. Open XMLA file, okay, file with new connection. 
deployment and this is the stupid so this one this XML file and contains the definition of my uh, tabular OLAP cube and uh, if you execute this XML file on your tabular uh, OLAP server uh, the new database will be generated this is no problem it's how the XML files are working so and but uh, we already generated uh, the OLAP cube if I click on the refresh you can see there is a new database generated by analytics creator. This is our tabular OLAP model. And let's take a look on this tabular OLAP cube. I will open the Power BI desktop and will connect to this OLAP cube. On. We get data, analyze the services, demo, test the huh? Okay. Oops. Uh, sorry, I uh, test the huh? oh, Exactly. Okay, and here you can see the list of uh, the facts and dimensions. I can see the structure of my OLAP cube. There are several uh, fact transformations, for example, like this one. Uh, several dimensions. This is the OLAP cube or tabular OLAP model generated by analytics creator, and this model. Uh, uh, is uh, the same model like uh, the structure of the data mark layer in the analytics data. At the moment, at the moment, uh, this model is still empty because if I let me take a look on, for example, department, there is no data. I have to process my OLAP cube. Let try to process it. This database. Okay, script execute data this process 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 is done and now refresh okay I can see there is some data okay, for example name multiple oh, sorry uh, edit. There's a name of department. Let me add some, for example, fact employee department history. Where there are our measures, for example, distinct count of employees. I can see the number of employees. As you see, you can see that our data warehouse is working. Uh, the data are in the OLAP cube now. We generated uh, from scratch the new data warehouse. Uh, now I created the on-premise solution, but I can use the same model and um, deploy the changes into the, uh, on, on, on Microsoft Azure. I can generate, for example, Azure data warehouse, Azure database. I can generate the Power BI data model using the same model. Model remains uh, unchanged, but the deployment phase can be, of course, changed. Well, uh, I think I'm done with my presentation. It's 11 uh, uh, a.m. And uh, if you have questions, please, you can ask me. Uh, otherwise, Peter, I think I am I'm finished. I'm done. You can continue, Peter. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so if you have some questions, uh, Dimitri is done with his live presentation. Uh, yeah, we will answer.
So how did you like it? Did you understood everything? So there is one. Uh, you can unmute. Uh, Johan, you can unmute yes. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, uh, one question on the wizard. Is this a general wizard which is um, analyzing the data structure or is it a wizard which is based on a source system? For example, is it a special wizard for SAP? Um, uh, uh, well, uh, we have different wizards uh, for different uh, data sources. Uh, for example, in, uh, usually if you use uh, the typical databases, we are trying to um, import the uh, table structures. We are trying to uh, find out the information about the references between the tables. But if there is no uh, information about the references, of course, you should provide this information by yourself you should you you, you can modify okay. the uh, uh, for the sap tables uh we have open uh wizard uh and uh we can uh, read the information the metadata from the sap tables sap delta queues sap odp objects sap uh, uh, hierarchies uh and we have some um some uh, called uh, macros or some object scripts to uh, automatically provide the information about the references between the SAP tables. We can uh, generate automatically the uh, references uh, between the SAP tables. It is um, it is not generic. We can we have different uh, visas for mm -hmm. um, uh, especially for SAP uh, in our case. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. So anybody else? Important, important is uh, our visa analyze, uh, do not analyze the data in your data warehouse. We do not read the data. We only analyze the metadata, the structures of your tables, views, uh, the uh, fields, uh, the references, but we do not access uh, the data in the uh, data warehouses. Okay. And uh, maybe interesting for SAP especially, we have uh, some kind of meta uh, connectors. Let me show you what is it, import connector. I can, if I add the new connector, I can add connector and uh, uh, then uh, analyze uh, the metadata in your database, or we can import uh, the connector definition, for example, from cloud. Let me do it We have some, um, metadata already stored in our uh, example is this one okay Shopify connector and uh, for example to create the SAP data warehouse you don't need access to the SAP system uh, you can use our existing sub FI for example meta connector it already contains the metadata of the tables related mm -hmm. to sub FI for example I don't know accounting document you can see this Book, booking scopes, backup mm -hmm. uh, booking mm -hmm. header table, uh, and uh, of course your own table can have, for example, some additional columns, uh, some yes. set columns, and uh, but this is easier. You can uh, later uh, um, compare the metadata in this SA Subify connector and your existing SAP table. You can uh, perform such. Uh, uh, such compare, com comparison and uh, you can update uh, the metadata but important is you can start to create the data warehouse the SAP data warehouse without to have access uh, to the uh, SAP mm -hmm. system you can mm -hmm. use uh, the meta connectors which we can uh, provide uh, give you or you can create your own meta connectors for example you have access to the SAP system you create such meta connector store it in the cloud and later you can use it everywhere uh, without to have access to the SAP system and uh, it, it will work and our customers use this uh, way very often. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's very interesting. You can have a trial version. You <laughs> Test Good it. to know. Of course. <laughs> no problem. Everybody can have a trial version. So just go on our new fancy website, press the button, uh, get trial, 
and then uh, answer all the questions and I think in, in almost uh, 24 hours you have the trial version. Yeah. So, one more question. Maybe Federico, he's, uh, you are unmuted. So maybe you want to say something. <laughs> Okay, if not, can, then... I, can, I st can I start with a second question? Sure, sure. Um, with, with, the, with the deployment, how does it work? Is this a, a Delta deployment or is it a full deployment or, uh, or, can, I, or can I choose? Uh, <laughs> it is very interesting, important question. Uh, first, uh, if you deploy uh, the databases, uh, this um, way to use uh, the deckwork files, there is no difference between the full and uh, partial deployment. Uh, if you uh, have the deckwork file, and use later for example. There is, um, there is a, this, this, this is the, this is not not our uh, 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 development. This is a Microsoft development. Uh, this is a Microsoft way how to deploy the databases. Using the deck, if you use the deck files, you can use later the SQL package dot utility, and you can uh, if you deploy the deck file, uh, the Delta script will be generated by Microsoft using this SQL package dot utility and your existing database uh, uh, will be upgraded to the new uh, using this deck file. As I said, there is no difference between the full and partial deployment. Uh, if you have no database, the new database will be generated. If you have already the database, the Delta script will be generated and this Delta script will be applied to your uh, database. This deck file deployment, this is a very uh, interesting and uh, this, this is the best way how to deploy the databases. And if you deploy your Olap cubes, uh, yes, this is a Delta deployment. If you have uh, no Olap cubes, a new Olap cube will be uh, generated. Mm -hmm. If you already have the cube, uh, the existing Olap cube will be um, changed and uh, will be uh, upgraded to the new uh, version. Okay. And so, so, so the mechanism for the Delta. This is a Microsoft feature this from is the application. This is Microsoft studio. features, exactly. We ah, have okay. no own uh, uh, <laughs> deployments uh, to, no, no own uh, developments to uh, yeah, yeah. how to okay. deploy. Everything is a um, poor Microsoft uh, way how to deploy something. Yeah, okay. Thank you. It's... Well. Okay, so... Uh... Now we close uh, this session. Thanks a lot uh, for being with us and uh, join our uh, demo and uh, data warehouse automation for beginners. Uh, we have in two weeks uh, another session with, uh, I think, with SAP. I hope you can join us too. In uh, 10th and 11th of November, we have a big uh, conference, the Analytics Creator Data Warehouse Automation Conference uh three half uh, hours each day and a lot of customers and and partners represent their uh, solutions uh, and we will have a discussion there uh, about the different cases uh, and uh, you, we will announce uh, the new roadmap for 2023 i hope you will join us and uh, yeah and also visit our new website uh, there are many new information on there so uh, keep in touch with us and um, hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot uh, and uh, have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.